so we landed a pretty big job in Chicago, um, five figure, and we are treating ourselves to a very nice restaurant, which I know nothing about, and Susie booked everything. So we're having dinner at Alinea, and I am so excited. This is a three Michelin star restaurant, and uh, just got renamed to the world's 50, 50, world's 50 best restaurants. And so, yeah, we're really excited. It's gonna be, I think, a 14 course dinner. And yeah, we had to book three months in advance. It was the first thing I did. We found out we were coming to Chicago. So I've been looking forward to this for months. And so really, really excited. I think it's gonna be the highlight of my eating and food career. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does sound like the most posh we have done. So we had to dress up a little bit and um, it is shaving off a fraction of our paycheck, but we'll be okay. And given that a lot of the business that we do is food oriented, it's actually really good for us to know as upscale as it gets, you know? This is one of the best in the USA. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was part of my justification as well. Is like, you know, if you should, if you want to be talking about food and working in the restaurant business, even as photographers, videographers, it's a great idea to have a reference of what some of the best service and food is like. So we're really, we're doing this in the name of research. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is what we research. Could say. We're back from our dining experience. Yeah, so we had our dinner at Alinea and yeah, it was, I don't know what to expect, honestly, because usually I do like extensive research. I look at on my blogs, I look at Instagram and try to get an idea of what to expect, if it's worth booking um, at a restaurant. And this is one where you actually have to book at least three months in advance. They actually open up all the reservations online and you have to almost race to get a reservation. And it's all prepaid in fact too. So you have to know your date, know your time and prepay. And if you cancel, you don't get your money back. So it's really a commitment. And so that much I had researched, that much I knew about. And so at that point, yeah, you're just kind of gambling on the fact that this is an experience that we just want to give it a go. And so without even doing a whole lot of research, um, I did enough research to know that it was an unmarked building. So that's another thing. Like, it's yeah. not obvious that that is the restaurant. The only indication was the little parking valet sign up front. And so um, that and, you know, everything is curtained off. You can't even see the inside from the outside. And so it's a nondescript kind of unmarked building. It was actually about 20 minute drive from the middle of downtown Chicago where we're staying right now. Yeah, so the food, it's all done in ways that you, you find unexpected. I think that's the whole take on it. Mm -hmm. They try to get it so that you've never had any of these things before. First, we had the caviar and white chocolate. The second one was asparagus done like five different ways in the same dish. Mm -hmm. And it was like every bite you take is actually different from the last bite, which was very interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, then I think my favorite course was either the mushroom course or the one with the Wagyu. Mm -hmm. So the Wagyu course was the only thing that actually reminded me of something I've had before because it was just like our wedding dinner. It was. Um, beef wagyu and then it was um it was a5 wagyu yeah that's actually. true <laughs> and black truffles and foie gras so that was similar to our wedding dinner it's just the beef differed yeah and the presentation was also very different yeah um so that's another thing is that you know this is a 14 course dinner so there's actually at least two different options maybe even three different options that you can book um the first option i think is like a 24 20 plus course uh dinner that one actually sold out the fastest. So I was actually going back and forth between do we do that one or do we do like the smaller, like the 14 course dinner. And I, but my didn't have to make a choice because that first dinner was sold out so quickly that we didn't have a choice but to get the 14 course dinner. Yeah, now when so, we were there, it looked pretty amazing. So next time we want to get... We're building up to it. So we're doing the lower level one first. And next time, hopefully, yeah, we have the budget <laughs> yeah, so to do the bigger one. This, this too was the best one that we have had so far. So... No regret whatsoever. It was mm -hmm. awesome. And they take you through the kitchen so you can see all the lab mm -hmm. environment that they're doing things in. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. 
Um, yeah, what, what did you like the most? Um, I think, I wouldn't say that I had a standout dish. I think what I just appreciated was the fact that even though, you know, it's 14 courses, but don't worry, it's not like these courses are giants. Like, they're actually like a couple of bites each mm. maximum. Like, you're not going to get totally full off of one one dish that they serve you. Yeah. And off the whole off the whole menu as well, like if you're a really heavy eater, you may not actually get full off this course or off this dinner, but that's not the whole point. The point is to appreciate each course as it comes out. And what I really liked was just the 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 whole experience part of it in that they really paid attention to other senses that are engaged when you're eating because it's not just about flavor. Like there was a lot of they really paid attention to your sense of smell. Yeah. And I think that that's something that, you know, we got into that discussion about we both had done, you know, experiments as children where we um, were blindfolded and had to do taste tests and had our noses plugged. So that really uh, emphasizes how important your sense of smell is for your sense of taste. And I don't think I've really had a restaurant experience in Seattle that takes advantage of that. Yeah. Like, plays on this, your sense of smell in addition to your sense of taste. Right, just then they went all out with uh, things burning and smelling right yeah. next to you on the table. Mm -hmm. And they... well, in fact, when you walked in, right, you had we had like this like bowl of like limes and coconuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the real main reason for that was just so that they could have the dry ice in there and then it um, ignites like the sense of smell mm -hmm. and it really offset that little Asian course that we had right, right. and so it, like when you just smell the limes and the coconuts and then it really played off of like that fish sauce and the other Asian elements to those dishes and the peanuts it was like oh the flavors I feel like just got enhanced just by having that extra smell and so that I think was just a theme for like most of the dishes tonight is that they recognize it's not just about flavor it's about yeah um, your sense of smell and one one case also they had a um, like a, a music piece yeah. even though they didn't play it so that was the thing is that you had to read the music but if you don't read music or you're not familiar with the song it was a little you know hard to really make that connection but I like that they just paid attention to that as well because it's also you know, there's that audio version as well because there's no music being played either. So the whole ambience in the restaurant quiet, is, yeah. yeah, like there's, um, you set it yourself. And so that I think is the other thing about our experience is that you have other tables around you. So then if people have conversations, that kind of adds to your experience as well. Yeah, that was interesting. It's also really visual. Everything, every course mm -hmm. is done visually very different. Some of Some are served in wood. Mm -hmm. so there's like a fire burning, there's like dry ice erupting like out of a dish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then even serve the balloon that's like a made of sugar and it, uh, it's full of helium. <laughs> and so actually that was another thing too is that so most people around us were dining with other people, either just one other person or sometimes groups of people. There was one solo diner and I'm not there to judge why she was there by herself, but I feel like um, by dining by yourself, you miss out on some of those elements, like the helium. Mm. I think when she did that, I don't think she spoke. If you don't yeah. do that, you don't get the full experience of like why the helium is there and how it just enhances the experience. It's pretty silly, yeah. So yeah, it's not like you shouldn't go by yourself, but I think that you don't get the full experience if mm. you go by yourself. Mm, yeah, you should get experience somebody. Experience better shared with somebody. But then if, again, if you're going to have a meal by yourself, it's a very interesting meal to be entertained just by the meal itself right. as well. So yeah. yeah, it's a really, really good one. It's a very experimental type of dining. Um, not much of a staple and the things they did do give you are high-end like there, there is caviar, there is wagyu, there is morel mushrooms, there is truffles and all that but it's all about what they've done to it. Yeah and I think in a lot of ways too is just challenging your perceptions in certain ways like that first dish it was like it looked like a truffle or like <laughs> okay. white chocolate yeah but they tell you in advance that there's caviar inside but mm -hmm. still you look at it and you expect to you know put it in your mouth and just have like a white chocolate truffle and it's like the total opposite yeah, yeah, it's, it's like filled fish. with caviar and crepe fish <laughs> yeah. and you're like oh that's a different different than what you would have expected visually yeah yeah yes yeah, it's good good and even the cocktail they give you it's almost like a Bloody Mary, but it's a tequila based and, and it's not tomato based, but it's pepper based. Mm -hmm. And it tasted really good. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so everything they did was completely outstanding. Mm -hmm. Nothing was ordinary and everything was super well done. Mm -hmm. It made me want to do more um, dining. Like, I don't even know what we're eating for the next three days. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're working for the next three days. So this is so. our one night to play. But again, yeah, that was part of, I think, this whole experience. You know, this is our first three star Michelin, or three Michelin star. Um, 
experience. And so, and that makes me question too, like if you were someone that went to a lot of Michelin star restaurants, if something like this would have blown your mind or if you would have been reminded of it in other restaurants, I don't know. But for yeah. us, you know, this is the first experience like this that we've had. Yeah, we did Michelin in Italy and one in Hong Kong, but mm -hmm. that's just, that was the, that's like, a different one, kind. Yeah. yeah, Michelin star restaurant in Hong Kong. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't uh, really feel like a Michelin star restaurant. <laughs> yeah, but this was nothing like any of the ones that we mm -hmm. have had so far. So overall, definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, but just plan advance. Right, and don't miss your appointment. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention, another thing I really liked about tonight was just the way that they presented the menu. So I don't know if they do this for every seating, but when we first arrived, you know, you have like this menu of like scrambled or this card of scrambled words and you're not really sure what it is, but you just kind of automatically assume that it's a word search. And then your server comes by and tells you that, yes, indeed, it is a word search. And if you choose to play along, you can try to find some words that are connected to the menu, the experience that you're about to have tonight. And so, yeah, that was actually just a really fun way to engage with, um, with Martin and just to give us something to, to do and to sort of jumpstart the conversation before the dinner and sort of get us in the mood for what was to come. And so, yeah, I just appreciated that they did that and it was just a nice way to start off the meal that wasn't so that, you know, you're not just on your phones and it just gives you something to start talking about right away and makes it really interactive for the whole night. And at the end of the night, they did actually give us the, the answers to all of the um, words in the word search. And we actually went way overboard. We found more words than were actually in the word search. But, you know, that sparks conversation, too, because you, you take some of those words and then you try to find meaning throughout the night. And so, yeah, I just really appreciated that touch and that approach to um, presenting the menu.